Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Nathan Drinkard. I'm Jay Waz. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As always, it shows up on the Anchor app. That's where it's hosted, but it's also on all the other all the other podcast uh, platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the rest. Uh, and if you prefer the video format of the show, we're also up on the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us at all those locations. And as always, like, listen, share, subscribe. We'd appreciate it all. Uh, what's going on, Drink? Well, you know, just another day, another dollar. We got, we got, a, you know, a lot of good stuff on the sports front. We also got the state of Texas that said, hold up, hold my bill. Let's open this thing up. So, you know, in the spirit of that, let's, let's open this thing up and let's talk some sports, baby. Let's roll, baby. Yes. Open it all up. In episode 35, the <laughs> Celtics win again. Lloyd Pierce gets fired. And we react to the Arizona Cardinals. They had a big signing. They signed J.J. Watt recently. But we begin with the Phoenix Suns defeating the Los Angeles Lakers 114-104 at the Staples Center last night. The win moves Phoenix into second place in the West, just barely in front of the Lakers and Clippers. And they're three and a half games back at the first place Jazz. Balanced scoring effort for the Suns. Five players scored at least 15 points. And they overcame an ejection of leading scorer Devin Booker. He got tossed in the third quarter after picking up two techs. The Lakers were not so balanced as LeBron James led the way with 38, but outside of Dennis Schroeder and Taylor Horton Tucker, there were very few offensive bright spots for the Lakers who were without the services of Anthony Davis, Marcus Gasol, and Kyle Kuzma. Drink the Suns are 15-3 and three since an 8-8 eight and eight start. How serious are you taking them at this stage of the season? Hey, man, L- listen, I got, I, you got to put a little respect on that name. Why? This is a Western Conference team. This is not an Eastern Conference team. This is not a team... That's uh barely 500 and they in the playoff race. No, this is a team like you said that's second in the West and just beat the defending champs. Now, if we if we use the microcosm of this, last night doesn't exactly you know bolt well to the whole. Let's take them serious thing. You had the Lakers missing AD. You had the Lakers missing um Gasol and Kyle Kuzma. Um, so it's something to be said that they was missing three rotational guys. Those wasn't three guys that wasn't never going to see the floor. Those three guys that was going to be on the floor regardless. So it's something to be said about that. As you said in the lead in, hey, in that third quarter, we seen Devin Booker also get an early exit away from the game. So it wasn't like the Suns was full strength throughout the whole game as well. So the back to the question, yeah, I, I feel like man, I got to take them serious. I feel like, listen, these moves that the Suns have made as of late, you tell me which one hasn't worked yet. I mean, you hired James Jones a couple of years ago to be your GM. He's up there. You got you hired Monty Williams to be the head coach to coach these young guys. He seemed to be getting a lot out the players. And then you brought in Chris Paul. And listen, for those of the watchers, the listeners that remember back weeks ago when we was talking about the NBA before it got started, I said I thought the Suns would finish as a top four seed. Um, and why? Because the acquisition of Chris Paul. Listen, I don't know what Chris Paul tell these guys in the locker room or what he do behind the scenes, but, hey, for whatever you want to say about him, he got to be a hell of a leader because everywhere he went outside of Houston, he done made some things happen. Um, and I think he could have made something happen in Houston if that team wasn't um, you know, beholden to James Harden. But with all that said, this guy's a game changer. And as you can see, look at look at this team, man. Like, I I believe I believe in the Suns. Long story short, I believe in the Suns. Why? I believe the Suns have they have a good mixture of everything you need. They have a, a, a prolific score, Devin Booker. Devin Booker, I'm sorry. They got a tough guy, uh Jay Crowder. They got they got a leader, Chris Paul. They got a younger, you know, coach, Monty Williams. It's like if you broke down the attributes of what you would need to be a contender, right now the Suns can check off most of those boxes. The only thing they might be missing is experience outside of Chris Paul. So you take Chris Paul out, you don't have much championship experience. You don't have much playoff experience, which is cool. Boom. You got to get that to get the experience. I do think they got a chance to get there. Now, let me flip it a little bit to the other team that's playing the Lakers. You know what it is. I got it on. Um, the Lakers right now, I don't think anybody is saying they're dead or in a hole or they're fraudulent or they're not contenders. 
But uh, one thing you would have to say at this point is the days of LeBron James being able to take me, you, and two other guys and get on the court and we we, we off to the, the, the NBA championship, I think that LeBron James is gone. Um, he, he, he relies on the referees too much. His, his athleticism is starting to dwindle. If you think I'm lying, just go look at some of the, the layup attempts he tried. I mean, he's out here getting blocked by Muzzy Bowles or the, or the equivalent of. Like, Art, what is his name? Cam Artis Payne out here, like, block. <laughs> Listen, there ain't no way the Miami Heat LeBron James or the first stop uh, Cleveland Cavalier LeBron James is getting stopped by some little dude like that. Like, let's be real. Um, but, you know, he's getting older. The game, father time is catching up with him. He's still one of the best players in the league. Let's, let's make no mistake. That's my guy. I love LeBron James. But for you to, you know, put guys on his back and say, hey, LeBron, take us to the promised land. Those days might be over. But last night, he he had a spectacular game. But then when you see he dropped 38 points, you're like, oh, the Lakers won. That's what – if I went to you right now and said – Hey, LeBron James dropped 38 points on the Phoenix Sun. You thought they win or lose? Most likely you'll say, uh, I think they win. Because LeBron usually don't need a lot of help to win a game, especially a regular season game, you know. And this is the Phoenix Suns, you know. We still, you know, people still got their they reservations about the team, right? So you you hear that and you're like, okay, cool. But then you, I, I, I wake up, boom, they lost by 10. Why? Because you just don't, they don't have enough. And we were talking about this before the show. Here's what needs to happen. The biggest difference between this team and last year, one, Anthony Davis is a lot more injured this year, I think, he, than he was last year. He he fought through it a lot last year. This year, maybe not so much. That 71 days off probably didn't help him out either. Um, that rim, rim protection ordeal is really hurting him. Like, I know a lot of analysts say, hey, you know, losing JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll be fine because they're getting better on the perimeter, which they they are really good defensively on the perimeter. They are. I like what Schroeder do. Uh, you know, I like when Caruso coming out. KCP can p- apply pressure. You know, even Kuzma playing some good perimeter defense, believe it or not. Um, and and it, it, it even makes LeBron play better defense. Uh, you know, it's in spurts, but he plays better defense. But at the end of the day, you still don't have anybody at the rim. And the problem is now teams are like, oh, they don't have rim protection. So when you get them to scrambling, the first thing they do is they run to the rim. And they usually leave a three-point shooter open because they know they don't have rim protection. And they try to run and protect the rim. And you you get a foul or you get a wide open three, et cetera, et cetera. So like we were talking about before the game, you know, just to throw that out there, I know the Lakers has been associated with three Big man, as of um, late, as of before the show, what I read, um, Andre Drummond, Hassan Whiteside, or JaVale McGee, you know, h- however they get one. But they need one of those guys. They need some type of rim protection that takes the pressure off AD, that takes the pressure off LeBron, and it allows the perimeter defense to do what they do. Because remember, this was the downfall of the Clippers last year. If you remember... Everybody said the Lakers can protect the rim. The Clippers can protect the perimeter. That was their big go-to for both teams on the defense side of the ball. Now, I, I'm not going to say the roles reversed, but I don't hear people saying that as much about the Clippers as they're saying it about the Lakers this year. So the Lakers should definitely be in the market for a big man. But the, with all that said, you know, what a, the Lakers took the L last night, rightfully so. You're missing three key three. Three key pieces. But I do think the Lakers played very competitive, even though they lost. That guy they got, um, with Daniel Jones, I think his name is, that guy can be something. He can be something. He's going to have to get play more, get, you know, hit the gym, get more, on the, get, more um, get his footing at, at, as a five in today's uh, NBA. But he could be something. I, I, I wasn't terribly mad with what he was doing last night. He came in the game. Instant defense, instant rebounding, and instant scoring. He came in, he was doing some things. So maybe if you can get, uh, let's say, Andre Drummond and then let Jones get in there, that's, I think you got enough rim protection. And you still got Montrez Harrell that's going to give you the energy. So I did like what I saw out the Lakers. Um, Hort, um, what's his name? Horton Tucker, 
He came in. He made some plays. So this team got depth. And I know that was one thing that a lot of people point. They got depth. The problem is they need consistency. They need, like, when Schroeder is out there running the offense, he got to run the offense. He can't be out here pit patting around uh, trying to give – a Marcus Morris to open three. Nah, man. You need to run the offense. Run, run it like this your team. That's what they need. They need somebody when LeBron is off the court to run it like it's their team. Not sitting here second guessing. Caruso can't run it. I'm sorry. I like Caruso. Man, my guy. Play defense, headband and all. Got it. Caruso can't run the offense. I'm sorry. He's just, I don't know. He can't do it. Like, it, to me, it's like shrewd or bust at this point. That, like, that's just how I look at it. I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's how I look at it. So, to wrap it up, man, I, you, you got to take them serious. I think the Suns will end up being a top four team because one of those three teams, whether it be the Jazz, the Clippers, or the Lakers, one, one of those three teams I think going to end up finishing outside of the top four. I don't know which one. Which and re, and that would let the Suns slide in and probably another team. Somebody's gonna end up by the top four of those three. Maybe not Utah, because Utah playing at a level where they can afford to lose some games probably after the All Star break. But the Clippers and the Lakers, we don't know how long Anthony Davis is gonna be out. Kawhi Leonard gets, you know what? We'll say that for the next seven. But you know, you you just we don't know. So. Yeah, I, I take the Suns as a, a serious contender. I think they'll finish in the top four. And they might hang around and be making some noise in the Western Conference, you know, second round or whatnot. I have to I have to start off with uh, I got a paging Frank Vogel right now. You know how you're in trouble when Jared Dudley plays 11 minutes. <laughs> just, I, can't, I can't deal with it. Jared Dudley with a, 11 points, no <laughs> Left, excuse me, 11 minutes, no points, two shot attempts, two rebounds, and three fouls. And somehow he had the best plus minus in the whole game for the Lakers. He was right. plus nine. I don't know how that happened. And the only thing he the only thing he did that looked and it was just one of them veteran, one of them old veteran moves. He pulled a chair out on some dude and and, and forced a travel. I think that, that, I think that was Darko Sarge, if I'm not mistaken. Sarge, I think that was Sarge either. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I'm yeah, uh, yeah. But to that to that point on J- Jared Dudley, yeah. Uh, also Frank, uh, yeah. This da- this uh, Damian Jones fella, yeah. He can he can stand to use a few more minutes. Jared Dudley need to get the suit and tie today. He can be an assistant coach to the assistant coach or whatever he wants to. That's the playing days. I'm sorry, right. Jared Dudley. It's about time to hang it up. But um, right. that was just you know it was just a case for the Lakers last night. They just they just didn't have enough firepower. And when you when you play in a team that's just just blistering hot from three, I mean they never they never stop. They open the game with I think they open the game with back to back threes, and it, it just never slowed down. You go 16 for 29, 55 percent from behind the arc. That's tough to beat for anybody. Um, and look, you know I think your point on I'm I'm gonna disagree just slightly i still think lebron can carry he can carry a team to a certain extent but he's got to. but guys that play the game with him you know even though it, it brings back uh memories of the mo williams and zadrinus ilgowskis that those were the second in command guys and he, uh you go back to his last year in cleveland when you had the the, the George Hills and Larry Nances and Jordan Clarkson's came in and just, they just, you know, came up smaller than, than anybody that, uh, you know, is shorter than me. And right. it just, that's what it, that's what it felt like last night. I mean, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Wesley Matthews, even Montrez Harrell. I mean, these guys just weren't very good last night and Schroeder, Schroeder was okay, but I mean, six for 17. So he wasn't that great. Really the only guy who you look out there and say, Oh man, this guy, play, he really, you know, jumped out on the film is uh, Horton Tucker, you know, six of nine, 16 points, very active. He, uh, he kept this, he kept him afloat early on in the game. I think he had 12 of his 16 in the first half, Um, but just too many guys, too many guys asked to step up in the absence of Anthony Davis. Um, I'm I'm less concerned about Mark Gasol, Kyle Kuzma. They, They have somewhat, they have some level of importance. Um, but I think, I think for the Lakers, uh, they're, they're still in a good position. It's 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 all going to come down to uh, when Anthony Davis returns and can he be healthy and you know battle through the 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 
the nicks and nicks and pains and all these different things that he you know typically goes through in a season like he was able to do last year um, and if he can do that the lakers will be just fine they'll be in great shape uh, because this team does have more quality depth than they had last year that's what happens when you get a montrez hero when you get a dennis schroeder and just your your role player pieces i think kcp's he's he's very important to this team and he has to be better than he was last night one for seven one for seven just simply won't do it uh, for for Phoenix, Phoenix, um, they they appear legitimate. I think the biggest thing that I could say to them, and I would I would go back to an individual, and I would go to to Chris Paul. I think it's um it, the the leadership piece is absolutely. I think it's absolutely on the mark. I would I would be you know surprised if someone could show us uh a, another player who has done seemingly the impossible with two consecutive teams with right. three, because la last year we didn't expect anything from Oklahoma city and they turn out to be uh four or five, the fourth or fifth seed in the West. And they push, right. I think they push Houston to a seven game series. Nobody saw that coming. Uh, of course, <clears throat> Phoenix had the hot, the, the hot uh, undefeated bubble thing that they did last season, but I was still, I was still pretty unsure of them. I didn't see much of it. Um, but Chris Paul's came in, he's had the exact same effect. Um, he's taken guys who, you know, unproven uh, for the most part, there's a lot of youth on that team. And just his leadership and his ability to run a team has taken him to new heights. Uh, I do agree, though, Monty Williams, he can, he can flat out coach. It's good to see him in the head coaching ranks. Uh, give some credit to James Jones for, forming his, uh, for you know, putting it all together. But the, the young guys, DeAndre Ayton, um, Mikel Bridges, he was uh, he was pretty eye opening for me last night. Uh, Dario Sarge is a really nice piece off the bench that led the team in scoring last night. Uh, just at face value, if you said LeBron gets thirty eight and leads the Lakers in scoring, and Sarge gets twenty one and leads the Suns in scoring, <laughs> yes, absolutely every day the in the week. Won. I don't need nothing. Yeah, I don't need no, no nothing else about it. Lakers win, and then on top of it all, oh, Devin Booker gets thrown out in the third quarter. I, I'd be interested to know what that was all about. Um, but right. yeah, but yeah, it really it really didn't have much effect on the game. Like the Suns didn't slow down. They just kept running their offense. Um, there was a stat that came up on the broadcast last night. They're 29th in pace of play. So they play, they don't get up and down a particular whole lot. I think, you know, maybe that has something to do with Chris Paul at his age. He probably don't want to run up and down the court the whole time, but they don't need to. They're very efficient in what they do. Um, if you're not, that's one thing about it. If you're not getting up and down in transition, which the Lakers like to do, they like to get up and down. Uh, but if you don't do that, then you have to be very solid in your, in the execution of what you're doing. And they are um, to a tune of 49% overall and 55% from deep. It was a, it was a, a, a surgical um, performance. You know, Jay Crowder, you mentioned him. He's a, he's just a guy who seems like wherever Jay Crowder goes, that team's going to be pretty good. Um, he fits mm -hmm. in nicely. He can uh, defend multiple positions. He's a guy who you look at, you know, if you if you pulled out, give me five guys who you'd want to have a shot at guarding LeBron. Jay Crowder is probably in that list. Um, so th th they have a there's a lot to like about this team. I'm I'm skeptical. I don't know. I don't know if they're this good. I, they I, they're probably somewhere in between the eight and eight start and now the fifteen and three burst. Uh, but there are when you look at it, there there's some good wins. There's some good wins that they have in this stretch. You've got. I think they, they beat Dallas three times. They got a win against – they had back-to-back -back wins against the Bucks and Sixers. Uh, they, you know, they just Knicks beat – Knicks and the Lakers? Oh, what, the Jazz and the Lakers, I think? Yeah, they, they beat the, the – I think they beat, they beat the Jazz early on, yeah. So, there, there's some quality wins. There's, you know, there's a, uh, quite a few, you know, not-so-good teams. But that's, you know, that that that's with any team. You can nitpick the schedule all you want. Right. But – um. I think I think at this point you gotta at least say that they they are a playoff team. I think there's no question about that. Are they the fourth best team or the second best team? I, I don't think I don't think they're top four. I think there's some teams that have underachieved early on that will pick things up. I'm thinking of teams like Denver. I'm thinking of teams like Dallas. I think those teams, both of them, I think Dallas has been, Dallas has been picking it up recently. I think they're both capable of catching up. But Phoenix, at, at at minimum, you know they look like a six seven seed right now. But they're uh, but they're playing tremendous right now, and they look they look every bit as legitimate as their record. 